Imagine having nine children, ages one to 15, and you've got another one on the way. That's the life of my next guest, Tara, who says she struggled with the current debate many parents are facing. Should she or shouldn't she vaccinate her children? Take a look. My husband and I have nine beautiful children, ages 14 to one, and we're expecting number 10 in just six weeks. Six plus five is what? I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I've homeschooled the kids, and that's pretty much my main gig. There are times when it's challenging to make decisions for my kids' health because when I first became a mom 14 years ago, I didn't hesitate at all about vaccines. It only took four years of motherhood for me to become vaccine hesitant. That, however, turned into seven years of hesitation because life got busy with young kids and just life. What made me stop vaccinating was the fear of what could happen. Everybody come here. Now I feel that it is important to get your children vaccinated for their own health. You got a toy? Yeah. But I think parents need to be well informed about vaccines so they can make a confident decision because the stakes are really high. Nobody wants to play Russian roulette with their kids' health. <laughs> well, Tara is joining me along with our very good friend, Dr. Frieda Lewis Hall, Chief Patient Officer of Pfizer. So, welcome. Well, Terry, you mentioned in the tape that you initially vaccinated your children, then stopped at baby number four. What changed your mind? I started hearing a lot of things from other moms, and especially online, just concerning things about safety risks with vaccines. And honestly, I got scared. But then by baby seven, you both agreed that vaccinations would be best again. Why? I talked to a health advocate and she told us, make sure you check your sources of information really carefully. Mm -hmm. And that was the changer. I was confident to start revaccinating the kids, but in the few weeks as I was setting up the catch-ups, all seven of them came down with whooping cough. And it was a nightmare, you oh, can imagine. Wow. So Dr. Frieda, what a huge wake-up call that was for Tara and her mm -hmm. family. So, with so much conflicting information out there, how can a parent know what's best when it comes to vaccines? Mm -hmm. So you wanna gather information, ask questions, and get medical advice from credible, reliable sources based on the science, just as Tara did. And we, vaccines work. The CDC reported that from 1994 to 2013, it's estimated that 21 million hospitalizations and 732,000 deaths were prevented by immunizations in children that were born in that 20 year span. There's been so much in the news recently about measles outbreaks, presumably because people aren't getting vaccines anymore for that, is that true? Well, according to the CDC, that is true. So if you look at the 2019 measles outbreak, here in the United States, there are about 1,200 cases that have resulted in this outbreak by November the 7th. And this disease can be serious. Um, if you look at those cases in 2019, nearly one in 10 resulted in hospitalization. Really? Mm -hmm. Well, what about this controversy that vaccines are linked to autism? Mm -hmm. Since 2003, there have been nine CDC-funded or conducted studies that have found no link between the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine and autism. A lot of people say, then how did all of this get started? So there was a study in 1998 that has since been debunked. So the research that was the base of the study was found to be false. The journal that published the study has withdrawn it. And the doctor who wrote it has lost his medical license. I think people don't realize is that vaccines undergo very extensive and rigorous study to determine the safety and the effectiveness before the FDA approves it. This can take years, if not decades. And what about parents who worry about giving multiple vaccinations to infants? First of all, the immune systems of infants is a lot stronger than you may think. Vaccines uh, really account for only a fraction of the thousands of antigens or germs 
that babies and children are exposed to every day from what they eat, from the air, from stuff they put in their mouths. So the vaccines are designed to help the baby's immune or the child's immune system respond to certain infections um, more effectively and faster. In fact, studies show that not only is it safe to give several injections at the same time, but you end up with protection for the baby faster or earlier than they may otherwise have gotten it, and you have less visits to the doctor at the same time. Now, the CDC recommends vaccination against 14 infectious diseases before the age of two. Why? Because that's when babies are at the highest risk for these serious illnesses. What about side effects from all these vaccinations? As with any medicine, vaccines can have side effects, like soreness at the injection site or low-grade fever, but these usually go away within days and on their own. The bottom line is that vaccines are one of the best opportunities that we have to reduce the risk of serious effects of certain illnesses. But you should always talk to your doctor about any medicine or vaccination and the potential side effects if you're giving something to your child. Well, look, a great place to learn more about vaccines is at GetHealthyStayHealthy.com. It's got so much information. And of course, while you're there, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter. I'd like to thank all of my guests today and a special thanks to my buddy, Dr. Frida Lewis Hall. And thank you so much for coming here and good luck on number yeah, 10. Good luck on number 10. Uh,